unquote. We're looking for answers on this one. Bring in our headliner, Senator John Barrasso, chairman of the Republican Conference, sits on the Foreign Relations Committee. And Senator, thank you for coming back today. We've got a number of topics to get through. The news from New Zealand is very tough to digest. Uh, middle of the night there overseas, 49 dead. Uh, we're told at least three have been arrested. At one point, it was described as three men and maybe a woman may have been arrested as well. We'll see where that goes on the police side of this. But uh, your first reaction to this when you woke up this morning? Well, I agree with the prime minister and I agree with the statement out from the, from the White House. This is horrific to me. This is terrorism. But whether it's in New Zealand at the mosque, whether it was in the synagogue in Pittsburgh, the South Carolina church, the Texas church, it is particularly disturbing when it happens to people who are at worship. It's a horrible story. It's something that we continue to learn more about as the morning goes on. Who was involved, just how premeditated that attack was. I want to get in the, the words of the president this morning uh, reacting to that attack, saying, quote, my warmest sympathy and best wishes goes out to the people of New Zealand after the horrible massacre in the mosque. Forty nine innocent people have so senselessly died with so many more seriously injured. The U.S. stands by New Zealand for anything we can do. God bless all. Senator, final thoughts on this. What should our message be to New Zealand in the wake of this horrible attack there? Well, certainly we stand by them. We continue to condemn terror and terrorism. The world continues to be a dangerous place, and we will continue in this war against terror and terrorism around the world. Well, it's sick to think that he wanted to get a message out there, and he did it on social media, and he did it with the killing and the fact that he stayed alive and may stand trial in New Zealand sometime soon. Sir, another topic, the, the vote went on the national emergency. It went down yesterday. I want to get to that. Chuck Schumer reacting to the rebuke here. So it's not an easy vote. I take my hats off to those members on the other side of the aisle who have let principle rise above party, who understand what the Constitution requires this afternoon and have agreed to vote against this emergency. So we expect a veto from the president. You voted with the White House, sir. Why is that yeah. important? I stand with the president. There is a national emergency at the border. I was with the president Wednesday afternoon in the White House. Uh, he felt that if the, that the vote was going to go this way, he is prepared to veto. I encourage him to do so, and his veto will be sustained. There are not the votes to override uh, the president. Listen to Chuck Schumer there. I mean, he is a border security denier. He's denying that there is an issue at the border, that we need more security, and he's denying the money that we need as a nation to secure our borders. Today, 130 Americans will die in this country as a result of opioid addiction and overdose. That, to me, is brought here by the Mexican cartels, and they are using our borders as a way to do it. it. This wasn't just obviously Democrats who voted against the president's emergency declaration, members of your own party, Senator Brasso. What does it say about the Republicans who did not vote in line with the White House on this? Well, every one of those Republicans is committed and we are all united on securing the border. They want the money to, to be there to do it. We need a secure border in terms of a barrier, in terms of the, the funding for manpower, in terms of the technology as well. They wanted to do it a different way through the appropriations process. I would have preferred to do it that way. But ever since Donald Trump was elected president, what we have seen are Democrats obstructing him every step along the way that they can do it, even to the expense of our own nation's security. And to me, border security is national security. We're waiting for the White House for word as to when that veto will happen, and we'll bring that to our viewers is when it takes place. In the meantime, you got to vote on the Green New Deal. It's not binding, but it's going to happen, apparently, because Mitch McConnell wants it to. Uh, here is Ocasio-Cortez, one of the leading proponents of this idea, just yesterday with our Fox team on the Hill. I look forward to us having a real vote and not just a procedural vote. I mean, there's so much work to do in transitioning to 100% renewable energy, and we have to do that work with union labor. We have to do that work with, uh, by reinvigorating our entire workforce. So you know what the debate is, sir. How's this vote going to go, and what will it tell us? Well, it'll tell us a lot about the Democrat Party uh, as they stand up for this that they have promoted and that so many of the Democrat candidates for president have supported, endorsed, and co-sponsored. Look, this so-called Green New Deal 
It is unworkable. It's unaffordable. It will bankrupt families. The cost is about $65,000 per family per year. Uh, she just talked about union jobs. Well, the AFL-CIO, which represents 12 and a half million union workers, has slammed this Green New Deal as being unaffordable, hurting workers, hurting our economy, and it doesn't work. The, the, what is happening is, in terms of global emissions, the United States only makes 13 percent of those. 33 percent come from China and India. We should not tie our hands behind our backs, lose our own competitive uh, advantage in ways against other countries and put us at an own disadvantage on the idea of this pipe dream that is going to hurt our economy, hurt our workers. It's truly a road to socialism. And it's not just energy that they're trying to control. It's health care and it's our lives. But still, we've seen a lot of support for it, a lot of enthusiasm around it. And some of those Democrats, they're vying for their party's um, nomination for the presidency, are backing the Green New Deal. What does all of this mean for 2020, Senator? Well, for 2020, it shows, Sandra, that the Democrats are taking a sharp, hard left turn liberalism. Uh, to me, they're careening over the liberal cliff. They have taken so many hardline positions, which go way so outside the American mainstream that it's scary. And it's the so-called Medicare for all, which eliminates private insurance in this country. It's the so-called Green New Deal, which forces expenses of $65,000 on every family in America every year. You've seen their position on abortion recently, which essentially allows murder after birth has occurred, item after item. The Democrats have gone far to the left, and I think that's going to be what we're going to see in 2020, because it, it, we started by talking about the border. We have presidential candidates on the Democrat side who want to eliminate immigration customs enforcement. They want to eliminate some of the barriers that are already there. We need barriers at the border. The president has been strong on that. They want to take them down. They like the, apparently like sanctuary cities. We have drugs cartels uh, moving it's those drugs the, um, into the United States. It's a real problem. It's the shaping up of a campaign, and we'll see what side it comes down on. When is the vote? When will that happen, the procedure of vote in the Senate? Uh, it'll happen about a week and a half from now. Okay. Uh, we'll have plenty of time to break. debate it, it. Uh, discuss it, and, uh, and then defeat it. All right, Senator Th John Barrasso, we'll see what happens then. Thank you for your time, the Republican from Wyoming. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you, Senator.